Let's talk about cations. So you've already seen the video on ions in general, and we know an ion is a charged particle that has either lost or gained electrons, and therefore it has become either positively or negatively charged. So we are gonna focus just on I, um, cations for this tutorial, and a couple quick reminders for you. Cations come from metals, which are on the left side of the stair-step line on the periodic table. So just for reference, here's our stair-step line, and our cations are the metals that are going to come from this side. Um, because they very easily lose electrons, and remember, they are losing electrons because they want to look like a noble gas, they end up with a positive charge. Now I'm gonna explain that just in a little bit more detail. Um, make sure you know what I mean here before we move on. So let's just take a look real quickly at magnesium. Magnesium has an atomic number of 12. That means that a neutral atom of magnesium has 12 protons in the nucleus, which have a positive charge, and it also has 12 electrons. Now if you have 12 positively charged particles and then you have 12 negative particles in an atom, those charges are going to balance each other out, and that's why the atom, as you see it on the periodic table, is neutral. Neutrons don't have a charge, so we're not worried about those right now. Um, sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons. The positive, positive and negative, again, balance each other out, so it makes sense that the sodium atom is going to be neutral. Now, when these metals lose electrons, you now um, aren't balanced, positive and negative, like you were to start with. And if you're losing negative particles, you will, by default, become more positive. I always tell students, you kind of do opposite of what the charge says. If you've got like a plus one charge, that really means you're losing one electron. If you have a plus two charge, you have to look at that as losing two electrons. So you can kind of think opposite of what the sign says and that may help you remember. So cations are always positive, and I have a cute little way for you to remember that. We know that cats have four what? They have paws. So for that reason, you can remember that cations are positive. I couldn't resist, I love that. Um, the nice thing is if you remember that cations are positive, you can remember that anions are going to be the opposite and that anions are going to be negative. So hopefully that little trick, you know, use what you've got, that little trick will help you remember that. One of the most effective ways that I have found to teach students the difference between um, Anions, cations, and what they look like compared to the neutral atom is to draw a picture. I'm really big on pictures because we can't see atoms and this helps us understand what's going on. So what I wanna do is um, so we'll start with sodium. So if you just have Na and that's all you see, you know that that is the sodium ion. The sodium ion is, um, this is neutral. There's nothing to indicate that electrons have been um, lost here. So we know that sodium is number 11 on the periodic table. That means that sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons. We also know, and here's a good review for you, that if you take the mass and round it to 23, 23 minus 11 is 12 neutrons. Now, if we look at what happens when sodium loses an electron, we see now we suddenly have a positive charge. This is literally like this little sodium atom is holding up a sign saying, hey guys, I just lost one electron. He's just letting you know, I've just lost one electron. Um, now, when we look at the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in the sodium ion, we're gonna see a little bit of a change. Sodium is number 11 on the periodic table, so it still has 11 protons because I want you to remember that the number of protons identifies that element. But 
Whereas the neutral sodium atom had 11 electrons, we've lost one now. So now we only have 10 electrons. That explains that plus one charge, neutrons don't change. We can go even further with this example and we can actually draw this atom. Now I'm just gonna draw what I'm gonna call a cross section of the atom so that we're not taking up so much paper. So we know that sodium would look like this. You've got your nucleus and your nucleus has 11 protons and 12 neutrons. We also know that sodium has three levels of electrons. If you're wondering how I knew that so quickly, little trick, and this works for the first few rows of the periodic table, sodium is on row one, two, three, so I know it has three levels of electrons. I know that two of those electrons are on level one, eight of those electrons are on level two, and that last electron is on level three. These numbers should add up to your total number of electrons and two plus eight plus one is 11. That's what the sodium atom looks like. Now when um, that sodium atom loses that one electron and it becomes the sodium ion, here's what it looks like. So we're gonna draw our nucleus and the nucleus still has 11 protons and it still has 12 neutrons. So that is something really important to point out. When an atom becomes an ion, its nucleus does not change. It stays the same. But now we've got to look at our number of electrons. We've only got 10 electrons this time. And I'm just going to highlight that these electrons are what we're really focused on here. Um, so where are we going to put those 10 electrons? The first two go on the first level. Then we're gonna put the next eight on the second level and suddenly it's like hands off. I can't put anything else down. I'm out of electrons. What you can see happened is that sodium gave away its valence shell. That's the only place that your electrons are gonna come from. So when a neutral atom becomes an ion, it basically just gives away its valence shell of electrons. And if you don't know what a valence shell is, those are the electrons in the very outer shell, and those are the electrons that are actually responsible for bonding and a lot of the physical and chemical characteristics of that element. So valence electrons are super important. So um, what we see here is that when a neutral atom becomes an, a cation, specifically a cation, and again, we're dealing with metals here, they always give away the electrons in their valence shell. So for that reason, the cation is always going to have a smaller atomic radius than its neutral counterpart. That's important because that's going to be different when we talk about anions. Something else here that is really cool to point out, and I, this just makes sense. So notice that sodium right here has one valence electron, it gives away that one electron, and when you say 11 minus one, you get 10. Neon, which is a noble gas, has 10 electrons. What's happening here is cations will give away their electrons to look like a noble gas. I always tell my kids, if it's a cation, back it up. Sodium is going to give away one electron to look like a noble gas. Magnesium is going to give away two electrons to look like a noble gas. Um, so let's say that the, the noble gases are kind of like the superheroes of the periodic tables. The be like Mike syndrome, all the atoms want to be like Mike. They want to look like that noble gas and have that valence shell with eight um, electrons in it. Let's say that your um, hero is Superman. You just love Superman. And you get a costume and you put that costume on and you look like Superman and you feel like Superman. On the outside, your outer shell looks like Superman. But we know that you are still the person inside that costume. This is still sodium. This is identified as sodium because the number of protons are not changing. But on the outside, Sodium looks like neon, and that makes sodium really happy. So sodium looks like neon. And if you understand that the goal of a metal 
is to lose enough electrons to look like a noble gas, you can figure out how many, um, for, for general chemistry, you can figure out how many electrons um, these metals are going to lose in order to look like that because you're just subtracting. So we're going to do one more, and um, let's take a look at calcium. So if you have plain old calcium, let's take a look at that. Let's scoot you up here. Um, calcium has... An atomic number of 20. That means calcium as a neutral atom has 20 protons and 20 electrons. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and figure out my neutrons. You take the molar mass, you round it to a whole number. 40 minus 20 is also 20 neutrons. So now let's look at what happens when calcium becomes a cation. We already know that calcium has a plus two charge, and we know that because it is an alkali earth metal. It has two valence electrons, which means it has a positive two charge. Everything in this column has a positive two charge. So it's still calcium, so it has 20 protons. But this plus two is like calcium holding up a sign saying, hey guys, just need to let you know I've lost two electrons. So he's telling you I've lost two electrons here. So instead of 20 electrons, I'm going to have 18. The number of neutrons is not affected. So the only thing that changes here is we go from 20 to 18 electrons because calcium is giving away two electrons to look like a noble gas. So let's draw these atoms so we can get a better feel for what they actually look like. So calcium's nucleus has 20 protons and 20 neutrons. Calcium is on row four of the periodic table, one, two, three, four. So we actually have four levels of electrons. First level has two, the second level has eight, the third level is gonna have eight, 8 plus 8 is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We have two valence electrons. These should add up to your total number of electrons. So I'm going to make a little note here. We only have two valence electrons. That's kind of important. I should have noted that up here too. While we're at it, that one had one valence electron. So immediately we know because calcium has two valence electrons, when it becomes the calcium ion, these are the two electrons it's going to give away. It's going to give away its outer shell. So the calcium ion nucleus is still 20 protons and 20 neutrons, but this time we're going to lose that last shell. So we have 2, 8, and 8. 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 2 more is 18, which matches this. Again, we've lost that shell. So who has 18 electrons? Who was calcium trying to look like? If you come to calcium right here, it's a 20. Take two from 20, that's 18. Calcium is dressed up like argon. Argon is calcium's superhero because argon is perfect and that's what calcium wants to look like. Still calcium because it has 20 protons and that's, that identifies the element. The only way the identity of the element's gonna change is if the number of protons changes and that's getting into nuclear chemistry. Um, we're only interested in the electrons right now. So calcium looks like its hero, argon. So this is how a metal becomes a cation, a positive cation. They give away their outer shell. And um, another little important note I would put in my notebook is that the neutral atom... is always going to be bigger than the cation. And you can even make a note, I'm starting to run out of a little room here, but because the cation loses the valence shell. So that's a little abbreviation for you, and that just makes sense. So I hope this was really helpful for you in understanding 
why metals and how metals give away electrons become cations to look like noble gases. The next tutorial is going to go to the nonmetal side and we're going to talk about how anions gain electrons to look like a noble gas.